Thank you. <laughs> oh, you know so what? With, with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and um, and we're going to bring our come back with our guest, uh, Mr. Randy Chapman. Uh, the song that we're going to bring on that we're going to play right now is called Shallow, and we'll be back in just a few minutes on the Will and Thunder Show.
right, welcome back to the Will and Thunder Show. That was Shallow by the one and the only Randy Chapman, guitar virtuoso of Brevard County, Florida. What's going on, Randy? Randy? Hello there. Come on in. Rand- Randy, are you I- there? I guess we don't have him in yet. <laughs> it looks like he's on, according to my board. Um, hold on. Randy Chapman, are you there? We've had a few technical difficulties with this uh, caller situation the last couple of weeks here. Yeah, we have. Um, I'm sending a message on Facebook. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a. <laughs> I like that song. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I listened to a little thing on uh, YouTube earlier today. It was a uh, kind of a montage of uh, what was coming out, I believe, on this CD right here. And there are so many different styles and influences in this thing, and they're all. I mean. It, it, from what I've heard, it sounds excellent. What's up, fellas? There he oh, is. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? I don't know what it what's was. Going what's going on, Will? How are you doing, brother? Pretty good. I was sitting there talking to the man in, on Facebook. Are you there? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I saw that. How's it going, Thunder? It's going good, Randy. How you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing great. Listen, if you guys good. debate football and Redskins and gay people... Yeah, actually, we weren't really we weren't really debating football. It was more or less um, it was more or less you know these things happen to tie into football. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. But hey, so anyway, football. how you making it, man? What's, got this new CD coming out, man. How you feeling about it? Well, actually, it came out at uh, back in January, the, the second week in January, and uh, it, it was it was a long time coming because I had all kinds of different things going on in the last couple years medically and just writer's block and everything you could think of happened. So it took a long time to get this one finished. But it had been done, you know, almost, I mean, like 80, 75, 80%, 90%. And then I would stall out for two or three months and and just couldn't finish it for whatever reason. So it was actually supposed to come out back in October. And um, finally got it down to where, I had like three or four songs left at the end of the year, and I was like, I got to get this. This has got to get done. You know, it's it's way overdue. And uh, I, did, I think it was. I think it came out in January 11th. I think somewhere in there, 13th. It was the second week of January. Nice, so, nice. Okay. And uh, where can people pick this up at? Um, right now, just uh, you can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Amazon, uh, CD Baby, CD Universe. Um, it's all over the internet. Um, I sell it, you know, you can get a hold of me, you know, on Facebook or email me, you know, so I can uh, sell it directly to you. Excellent, excellent. You, you, you've got uh, we're going to have the link on the on the Facebook page on, up for the for the show. We're going to have the links on there. Um, but I also want to tell people, you know, we mentioned at the, the start of the show about this little contest that we're going to be having tonight. Um Basically, you people, the listeners, and, you know, based on what I'm looking at here, we've got quite a few people just listening, plus, you know, plus the people that aren't in the chat room. So, I mean, there's, you know, a good good amount of people out there listening. Call in. The telephone number to call in is 646-716-6135. You press 1 to get into the queue to talk to us. Um, stump us. Well, stump Randy. Stump Randy. It can be it can be questions about you know basically heavy metal, or if you know Randy personally, it can be Randy questions. Um, if you stump Randy, or he, he's going to defer to us. And if you stump a, you know if you stump all of us, you get a autographed copy of Randy Chapman's new CD called Cursed. And you there? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I don't know 
Oh, all right, you both are. I'm like, okay, I, wait a minute here. I thought okay. I heard somebody else. I thought I, I thought I heard somebody else starting to talk. <laughs> but, but yeah, it'll be an autographed um, CD of. Brain CD. CD. I'm having a brain fart tonight. <laughs> Apparently, Will Will's been drinking. Oh, Me? Oh, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't drink. He swills. Oh, I see. No, but we, uh, anyway, yes. Uh, but uh, as I was telling uh, Will just a little bit ago, uh, I went on a uh, YouTube today, and you had that little montage, little prelude to the CD that you have on there, right? Man, it's it's wide open. Dude. There's so many. I mean, this it's awesome. What, what was your inspiration on on this? I mean, it's just unbelievable. There's so many different styles of songs. I it, it mean, it's a variety, which is awesome to me because I hate when you you know go out and buy a CD and every song sounds the same, like ACDC. You know, uh, this, 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 it's wide open, I, man, and it's awesome. I don't know if there was any specific um, inspiration. I mean, I I pretty much like you know hard rock and metal ever since I can remember but I you know I like all kinds of styles of music so I just try to you know play whatever I whatever felt good to me I mean I think you're probably referring to some of the you know like there's a classical song on there there's a there's a like a country not country but more like southern rock kind of feel song on there right right um there's so there's a ballad on there that's kind of an 80s kind of uh kind of power ballad kind of song um there's all kinds of yeah, different stuff. I mean, from I mean, even, even the heavy people. stuff each has different influences. I mean, or that I've heard in there. Look, I listened to that little montage, and I got on YouTube and I listened to like Old Sepultura, and then I put some Testament on, some Ministry, and I'm just like, I was just there's so many little things in there. I mean, even some Metallica influences I heard in there. That one song I was listening to, you, you got a little guitar pick thing that's um, reminiscent to Fade to Black almost. Um, that's probably the classical one that you're thinking of. That's yeah, all classical was, guitar. Yeah, I mean, yeah that, well, and you said this montage, it only had a, you know, five, ten seconds. Right. You know, piece, you know, from each of these songs. But and from what I heard, I was like, man, this, this is awesome. I mean, and it changed up as you went along. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that one, that one that's a little classical guitar piece. There was actually two that were going to be on it, but I left one off at the last minute because I, I couldn't ever record it properly and I was never happy with the, the way it was turning out and I, I cha- and I'm kinda glad I did in a way because the song that, that went in its place was the power ballad called Ghost and it's a duet between me and a, a friend of mine uh named Laura Moore and she uh sang on it with me. I'd never done a uh, a duet with anybody before and it just came to me one day to hey maybe I should try this and see what and it came out beautiful. It's a really great song. Um but there's some other stuff on there, like you said, like there's stuff with keyboards, there's stuff with, uh, you know, organs and, uh, like, deep purplish type stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah there's it, it, a, a lot, it I mean, it's a lot, a lot of stuff on there, and, it, and as I said, from what I heard, is I mean, I love the diversity in it. Yeah, that's what I try, I try to just do whatever, you know, if it sounds good, then I throw it in there, if it doesn't, I leave it out, you know, or change it, or because I think there's one song on there that had a, uh, it has an organ piece on it, and originally when I wrote it, it didn't have an organ piece on there. So at the last minute, I went, you know what this needs? It needs an organ. And so I threw it in there, you know. So, And there's, you know, some of the lyrics, you know, there's like uh, at least two songs I know right off the top of my head that a, uh, a friend of mine that helps me write lyrics uh, from Indiana, his name's Mike Riggins. He's been a friend of mine for, for many years, and he helps me write lyrics sometimes. He wrote two uh, songs on here with me, and, you know, that kind of helps me dictate, you know, what the mood and the music's going to be, Cause, you know, he'll send me stuff and I'll go, wow, this is, you know, this CD is really dark and it's, uh, I don't know how to explain it, it's just dark, it's it's kind of, in a way, can be almost depressing, <laughs> but, you know, it's coming from a place where, you know, I was writing about some things that were happening and, you know, how I felt at the time, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm glad it's done and it, it sounds really, really good and a lot of people who have heard it, um, say it's the best one so far this is my fourth cd so you know i don't know what the next one's going to be i haven't thought about it yet i'm kind of taking a break from it while i'm you know doing some stuff with some other people right now so well, what, when, when did you start the when, when did you start the album this one was probably about two years ago and and it was oh, wow. like yeah it was a long time ago and i just 
like I said, I'd, I'd do a song here. And, and, you know, there's other songs. There's 13 on the album, and I did that on purpose because of the whole cursed idea. And, uh, right, right. <laughs> and the black <laughs> cat on the cover and everything was kind of, you the know. The black cat, um, yes, exactly. There were other songs, though. There was probably about, you know, 20 songs. And so I had to wheedle it down to the 13 to make it 13 to be kind of superstitious, like, you know. The black well, cat yeah, you- my sister's cat, and I, I had this great picture of it, and, you know, I just thought it looked really cool, and it kind of went along with 13 tracks and Curse as a title and Black Cat. Right. You know. Well, you know, I, I heard once that uh, music is what emotion sounds like, and so there's nothing wrong with being dark, because when, when you're in a space there, I mean, that's what music is. I mean, it, it's how to express yourself through sound. Well, there are you know, some songs on here that are, are totally, uh, you know, autobiographical. They're about me. And then there's other songs that I just, you know, you just make up. They don't, they're not about right. nobody or anything, you know. You just put it together and the words work or whatever, you know. Um, exactly. So. Now, you, now on I've, I've this got album. The, I've got the Amazon. Go, what? Uh, just go ahead, Bill. I'll ask you in a second. Okay, I've got the Amazon link up. It, it, you can only, am I correct? And or am I not looking in the wrong place? It looks like um, you can only get the MP3 on Amazon. I think so. Yeah, I think Amazon just does MP3s. If you want the actual CDs, you can get those from uh, CD Baby, and I think CD Universe, and me, of course. Um, they will be going up on my website um, once I get it all finished. Um, and, you know, probably PayPal and all that stuff, too. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, some people, you know how it is nowadays, some people like to have that physical copy in their hand, and some people, you know, they're okay with just downloading the, you know, the... Exactly. You know, so... It's, well, it's, I'm an MP, it's a digital I'm an era. Guy. Uh, I'm an MP3 guy. I don't necessarily <laughs> have... I like, I like the CDs myself. I like to have the CDs. Oh, really? <laughs> but um, but I, I just posted the Amazon link on the on the show page for on Facebook and I was looking you know that that's why I brought it up because I was looking for the place to get CDs and I couldn't find it but <laughs> but all right. it's all good well, I'll give you um, I'll, I'll give you another example Will you were talking about the diversity of the songs there's a song on there that's kind of a has a southern rock flavor to it and I I grew up as a big Leonard Skinner fan a lot of people don't really know that about me because I think I'm a metalhead but um it's called The Chosen One, and that song I wrote about being a vampire, how everybody thinks it's great nowadays, and I was writing more about of how much it must suck to be a vampire because you never die, and everybody around you keeps it's leaving gone. you. You know, right. so it was kind of like how it was not so glamorous to be a vampire, you know? It wasn't so great. Oh, so, you know, that kind of brings me to a, a true vampire movie, in my opinion, not these stupid Twilight movies, but... uh interview with a vampire, Brad Pitt. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, yeah, it was you know, exactly. Why'd you do this yeah. to me? You know, yeah, I'm yeah, forever yeah. beautiful and everything, but I'm forever alone. Yeah, that was you know, uh, exactly. Brad Pitt's character, exactly, yeah. He was always questioning Tom Cruise, you know, well, how could you do this to me? Exactly. That was kind of the same idea I had when I, when I wrote that song, which was from that movie and that whole idea. Oh, um, man, that must really suck to just be cursed again, there's that word, to, uh, you know, right. walk around and, Never be able to get away from it, you know. Exactly. Well, the thing is, exactly. Another another movie about it, and this is this is kind of ironic um, because the you've got these immortals. I'm talking, of course, about Highlander, but you've got these immortals, oh, yeah. and they're and yeah. they're 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 killing each other to obtain the prize, and of course that mm-hmm. prize is death. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. But after they've been around for so many hundreds or thousands of years, of course, you know, death is like, come on, get me out of here, please. <laughs> and there's, and there's some, enough, you know. There's some other, you know, there's some other stuff on the CD that, you know, uh, the, the classical piece that, that you referred to that sounded like Fade to Black, that one's called Immortal Beloved. That one was kind of inspired by um, somebody that um, I was close to, and um, I just needed a – I was always, you know, everybody knows I'm a big Randy Rose fan, and, you know, he, he used to be into classical guitar. And I took yeah. a classical guitar as a kid, and I got away from it when I started playing rock and metal. And um, I just kind of never – I always wanted to get back to it. And about three years ago or so, I, I finally went out and bought a classical guitar and started studying theory and all that stuff. 
and I started writing. I've got about five pieces. In fact, that's something that I would really like to do is a classical, you know, guitar album. Uh, probably I might do that next. I've got five pieces now that that I could record, and uh, but that one stood out, and I really wanted to uh, put it on the, on the album. And uh, you know, I just everybody who's heard that song really loves it, and you know, uh, I, I needed I needed a title for it, and you know, like I said, it was wrote, wrote about somebody who was really close to me, and um, or still is, and um, you know, it, it's just kind of sums it up, immortal, beloved, you know. And then there's uh, then there's the opening track is the one I think that kind of freaks a lot of people out. It's a song called Till Death Do Us Part, which was actually the title of my first CD. And I didn't, I always love that title, Till Death Do Us Part, because most people think of it, you know, when you're getting married, Till Death Do Us Part thing. Right. I actually, I actually read a story on the internet, it's a true story, um, this is where we start losing callers. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, not at all. Why? You'll see why. Um, it was about an older couple that they they would watch TV together every night. They would have dinner together every night, and you know they'd be sitting there in their their easy chairs, you know. And one night the guy died, and they had been together for so long that the woman couldn't bear to not be with him anymore. She didn't want to like. You know, bury him, didn't want him to be gone. She wanted to keep him there. So she did. She kept yeah. his dead body there. And every and night watching the TV with him and, you know, acting like he, he he didn't pass. And it was a real news story I read on the Internet, and I, I thought that that was just really, you know, something bizarre and out there. Like, oh, man, i got to write about this. So that's where that song came from. And right now people are going, you sick freak. You know? No, no. I mean, if, if it, that happened. Well, it was the last story I heard a couple months ago. What about the guy whose wife passed away, and he promised her that he'd never leave her and would never leave her alone. So yeah. he had her buried in his front yard. Yeah, I did see. And that. they yeah, made him. It. They made him put her in a cemetery. They, they 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 made him dig her up out of his front yard because some neighbor had a problem with it, which is yeah. such bullshit. Yeah. And then there's there's probably you know. Uh, you know, there's some other songs, like the song Shallow, you just played a minute ago. That one, that actually was wrote a few years ago, about three or four years ago. And I was going to put it on my last CD, but for whatever reason, I don't know why I didn't put it on there. I think maybe I had already had too many songs, and people had heard it before because it was already recorded. Now, on this CD, I re-recorded it. And um, I said, oh, i got to put this on this, this new CD. So it was the lead-off single, and it came out back in October. But it's actually about somebody from my life too and I can't tell you who because that wouldn't be fair to them. <laughs> but I they understood. Are shallow, so <laughs> right, right. Um, I've got a couple of songs um, like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Songs, right? well, and then there's you know a song like there's a song called Devil in Disguise that's kinda like the Jimmy Swagger type of thing, like where sometimes the devil is the person you least suspect. Exactly. Yeah. And I I've no, I've known one of those personally on a high, high level. Right, that, right, you know. And, yeah, you get what I'm saying. The people that you know, like say, like a doctor, somebody of authority, or a police officer, or whatever, you know, or a preacher, a, or whatever. Right. Well, back a on, preacher. Um, yeah, going, exactly. going back to the, going back to the, um, to death do us part. You know, you, you both are going to laugh at me for this, um, especially, you know, especially Thunder, who knows that I used to be a karaoke host and I used to hear this song like constantly. Um, mm. He stopped loving her today. Yeah. Um I never really paid attention to the lyrics of that song because you know it's like a it's one of these slow old school country songs and right. you know but i mean if you actually sit down and pay attention to the lyrics those are some of some probably some of the deepest heartbreaking lyrics ever written you know um about you know it's just, this this guy just kept holding on and holding on and holding on because he because he still loved this woman and finally he died and well, he swore he'd love her until he died, and he stopped loving her today. I mean, that, could, that yeah. kind of—that's another one of those songs that kind of goes along with what you're talking about, about you know, to death to us part. Well, I have a couple of songs that are you know like that, so I'm glad you you, you brought that up. There's a there's one called October Rust, that's kind of a breakup type of song, and it, but all my songs are, they got that kind of rock metal edge to them, so you can't really tell that they're really love songs, you know, and they're dark. <laughs> And, uh, well, you know, you know, okay, now, on that montage, I heard that lyric. 
October Rust. October Rust, which I thought was, I, I think it's a ingenious phrase right there, because October Rust can mean so many different things right there. Well, I can't take you know, credit for that. It, that was Peter Steele from Typo Negative. So, you know, he, October they had an Rust. Album, yeah, they had an album called October Rust, and I just liked that title. Yeah. Well, what I know so, that is, it, 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 so that Thunder. could be. So, oh, go ahead. He, he lives in Florida. He doesn't really. Um, he doesn't get to see the changing of the. I know that it's like rusty covered leaves. Ah, but see, like, he was smart enough to know that in the lyric it does say October's rust is in the trees. See, so I yes, do. that's know. what I. Okay, yeah. thank you so, very much. Yeah. That's where I'm. You know, I was like, man, you know what? That's pretty cool. Instead of you know, that's a good way to you know, portray a change of season. October's right. rust is in the trees. I'm like, man, that was so fucking awesome right there. I mean, yeah. you're not getting then, that in a pop song. You're not getting that in a hip-hop song. Only in a rock song would you get a lyric that goes like that. Yeah, and then the, the line after that is, it won't be long until winter's freeze. So Exactly. And I was yeah. like, man, I was like, that is so awesome right there. Because it just, right there, with eight, ten words... And a couple notes behind it, you painted a picture, bam, done like that. Well, there's several songs that, you know, like you say, songwriter, you try to do that. You know, there's a song uh, called Harvester of Souls, and that kind of goes back to like the World War II kind of thing where people were, I mean, it even starts out with an air raid siren, you know, kind of like on Black right. Pigs, you know. And a lot of my stuff, you know, could be compared to, you know, I mean, I hear people say, oh, you got that Sabbath influence, and you got that Metallica influence, and you get, so you yeah, I mean, so, yeah, and that kind of that song is kind of like that, like the whole uh, World War II war machine kind of thing going on. Yeah. Um, you got some, you got some Black Sabbath, a little bit yeah. of Ozzy, you know, little Zach Wilde. And, I mean, I, I've heard a, a lot of little things in there that I've caught that I'm like, oh, this reminds me of this. No, this reminds right. me of that. Song to song, which is, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you, you can definitely see where some of your influences are, mm. but you play yeah, it so pretty, well to yourself. It's awesome. awesome. It is pretty obvious sometimes that, you know, I wear a lot of my influences on my sleeve. Um, I try to, you know, at least make it a little bit original, you know, my own sound. So no, when people do. hear it, oh. they... Yeah. You absolutely do. As I said, like that classical piece, I just caught a hint of like yeah. a fade to black feel to it, you know. It had that, you know, nice guitar pick and sound to it. And, mm -hmm. you know, with, with a little bit of heavy in the background. I, then, I mean, I, it's very, very... Enticing. I mean, it pulls you in. You can hear a little thing here and there mm -hmm. where you can say, okay, well, I can hear oh, I kind think, of this I and think, there. I think the one that you're thinking of is a song called Forgotten Prisoner. The, the classical one is by itself. It doesn't have any other music. It's just a classical guitar. The, the one no, you're no, talking no. about, I believe, is, is Forgotten Prisoner. That that lyric was wrote, written by my uh, friend up in Indiana, Mike Riggins, and I asked him specifically. I said, man, you know, I love this this title of this song, I had the title, I'm like, and I had the music, and I'm like, I just, I got to write a song called The Forgotten Prisoner, and I want it to be about, you know, it's actually autobiographical, so it's one of the ones that's about myself, and I'm going, you know, I told him what I wanted it to be, and what the storyline kind of was, and, and he, uh, he just wrote these lyrics, and he sent it to me, and, you know, I just kind of rearranged them, edited it around a little bit, and it, it's perfect, and it's got, yeah, it's got kind of a, a fade to black kind of sound to it. Yeah, it's got a lot. All right, so you know the one I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's kind of light guitar picking. I'm part of mm -hmm. a little bit of, you know, you know, deep darks in the backgrounds with that kind of, you know, with melodic. The, uh, yeah, it's got like a choir. Right? Almost, yeah, like a choir, but it's got like a kind of like a melodic guitar picking in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. the other one, the classical one, is just by itself. It's just a guitar by itself. Yeah, that's got to be The Forgotten Prisoner. Yeah. Um, now, then there's the, real quick the question. One, mm -hmm. Now, all these tracks on the album, did you do all the drum tracks, the bass tracks, everything yourself? I play everything. I do all the vocals except for uh, the song Ghost, which um, the lyric, half of the lyric was written by my friend Laura Moore, and she sang uh, on it with me. And then the two lyrics for um, Darkness and The Forgotten Prisoner were written by my friend Mike, the lyrics. But all the music, yeah, I wrote all it. I played all the guitars. I played all the keyboards. I played all the bass parts. All the drums are programmed. I played the parts, though. 
So I had to actually I'm going to tell you something prepared. right now. As a bass player, mm-hmm. I, I'm very particular on the way, you know, the bass should be played. And, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm into following the drums. I must commend you on your bass playing skills. Most guitar players underlook the yeah. bass yeah. lines in the songs. Right. On the songs that I heard, the, the pieces that I heard, your bass lines are perfect. They match the drums. They follow the fills. 100% impressed that, with it. That actually That's the way means to do a lot. It. Well, that means a lot for several reasons. Because, like you said, number one, most guitar players are just going to sit there and ride one note. You know, they're going to play like Nikki Six. You know, and I get this actually from my older brother, who is a bass player, and he's a phenomenal bass player. And, um, you know, he's always kind of stressed that to me, like, same thing you just said. You know, guitar players always just play, like, one note. How come they don't, you know, they don't think like a bass player? So, you know, when I would be doing bass parts, I'd be thinking of him saying that to me all the time. And we grew up listening to people like Paul McCartney, who was an amazing bass player. And, you know, um, people who are... They're good in their songs. Like Gene Simmons is a really good bass player, but people don't notice that because they're too busy looking at his makeup and his fire breathing and all that. But he really is a good bass player. Um, So, you know, I was always interested in, like you just said, the underlining parts of, uh, you know, what complements. I don't want the bass to play the same thing the guitar is doing. You know, no, I don't want the guitar, I don't want, you know, like I'll, sometimes I do two or three guitar parts, and I don't want all those guitars playing exactly the same stuff either, you know. I think another yeah, mistake know. a lot of uh, guitar players do too is when they're, you know, I mix everything. I produce and mix everything, and when they do, like, the drums, they tend to mix the drums too low and the guitars too loud. And I'm the opposite. I like my drums to be loud and up front so people can hear them because that's what people are going to feel right away. Whenever you're tapping on your steering wheel in your car, you're doing that to the drums, you know? Exactly. Right. You're you're, here, you're 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 tapping to the drums, right. you're feeling the bass, and listening to the guitar and lyrics. Right. I mean, without a guitar or a piano part, that's the melody. That's what, you know, you start, <laughs> you always start a riff or an idea with a guitar player or a keyboard player or whatever. But the bass player, they fill in those, those uh, blank spots and the drummers keep the time and the beat and it, it's got to be all of it. It can't just be one thing, you know. Yeah, and it, 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 that's a show of a true musician right there. I mean, mm-hmm. and I've said it a hundred times. You know, I'm not the greatest bass player that's ever lived. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I, I'm decent. I'm decent. I mean, I love playing, but I, I am trying true to the old school version of a bass player. We're the yeah. foundation. We're, we're what ties in the melody and the rhythm. And if you can keep the melody with the guitar player, but keep the rhythm with the drummer, then you are a good bass player. Right. You gotta have I, that, I got a little. You know. I got a little funny story about that too. I mean, I I kind of learned how to play the bass as a result of being in bands with Thunder. There. I mean, Thunder is selling himself short. He's a badass bass player. Um, but you know, after me and him split, you know, after, when I left Florida. Um, you know, I, I started doing recordings of my own, you know, similar to what you did, except mine don't mm-hmm. sound nearly as good as yours. But, <laughs> uh, but I, but what I, but I was, I was playing my bass and I was doing it the way that Thunder would do it, like playing along with the. the ah, music, the, yeah. And funny thing, Brian and I, um, a former drummer of, of, you know, of mine and and Randy's. Brian. Um, Brian Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, he, and I'm surprised he hasn't called in yet. Brian, if you're listening, call. Um, but One of the best drummers you know, I ever got to him. play with. Uh, I hooked up with him and um, again in uh, South Carolina back in, uh, I guess, 2003. Um, long story short, I wound up um, becoming a tour manager for a um, for a British rock band that Brian was driving the bus for. And... Um, at one point, we jammed with these guys, and and um, the bass player of that band, you know, he heard me play. I, I, I happened to be playing bass with um, when we were jamming, and the bass player was like, "Damn, you you are a good bass player." I'm like, "I'm not a bass player. I'm a guitar player and a singer." <laughs> uh, I, it's really hard sometimes because I don't really, 
I don't I don't really think I'm a great bass player, and I don't really like to sing that much. I'm a guitar player. I, I write guitar parts. I play guitar pretty good, I think. Um, I'm really good at writing riffs, and, you know, I, I'm a guitar player, you know, but I don't have, you know, the luxury of having a full band or time, you know, for people to come over all the time and work on tracks, and it's just easier sometimes for me to do it all myself. Another thing we were talking about songwriting is like a lot of times, but like that specifically, that song, that Forgotten Prisoner, it's in a it's in a weird minor key. It's a D minor, which any minor key right away kind of sounds creepy. So oh, that's yeah, probably yeah, another thing. That, of all keys. Probably another thing that you're hearing in that song, you know, along with that, you know, kind of. Uh, choir sound that I have going on in there, too. So I, I try to make a lot of things creepy. Everybody knows I'm into creepy stuff. So. There's nothing wrong <laughs> with that at all. You know what I took in college? I, I took a film and video in college. The majority reason why is for special effects, because I love creepy shit, too, man. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, the, the, the whole dark side of everything. Yeah. Well, I, you know, after doing this for two years, I, I you know, I have changed a lot in two years, so I admit, you know, I'm I'm ready for, you know, something a little bit more fun and, and lighthearted. And, and the girl that I was telling you about that sings with me on that song, Ghost, um, she, I'm working on her uh, CD right now with her, and her stuff is a lot more upbeat and happy, and it's kind of refreshing to not have to worry about all these dark imagery and, you know, scary stuff all the time. Her stuff right. is more like a Fleetwood Mac kind of sound, you know. Or a, That's kind of uh, cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And that'd be, you know, that, that's something new and refreshing that, you know, hasn't been – Overlaid a hundred times, either you know, it'd be nice to hear something with that kind well, of style. Especially like for that. especially for somebody like her, because she's she's very young. She's like nineteen, so to have somebody that young with that kind of style of music is is really different and refreshing. She's not yeah. doing like Britney Spears or anything like that kind of music. You know? That's awesome. It's kind Thank of cool. God. She writes all her she writes all her own music and all her own lyrics and. You know, all I do is, like, provide bass parts, drum parts, you know, and, you know, I pretty much produce her, but she already has the songs wrote, so. Well, um, well does she how have, far along are you guys? Do you guys have anything do recorded I mean, yet? We've got two songs almost completed, and um, she's going to only be doing probably about six, I think, like an EP kind of thing. And um, right now she's got a little bit of laryngitis or something going on with her voice, and she can't do anything, and so she's kind of nursing it until she gets better and then, you know, we'll get back to it. But two well, uh, why, why don't uh, you talk with her and see if she'd like to come on the show and uh, maybe debut a little something of hers. You've got two songs and maybe we can uh, uh, get her on here and she, talk with her a little bit. She might be listening. I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll get with her and see what she says about that. And, I mean, it'd be awesome. Uh, I mean, you know. I have a, I have your, a question. Um, this, this when you say she's writing, you know, when she's written the songs, I mean, how's she doing that? Does she play guitar or anything, or does she? Yeah. It's yes. kind of. Oh, she actually plays guitar. Yes, she plays guitar. She knows like chords, and she writes her own stuff. She's really very talented. Has an incredible voice. Um, good songs, and you know, the first time I heard her, I was just like, I gotta record you. So. That's you know, awesome. it was just That's I, and plus, you know, like I said, I wanted to get away. I was finishing up mine, and I'm going. Man, I've been doing this for two years, and everything's been so dark and, you know, <laughs> evil. And I just well, you know, something. And, and I'd love to hear a classical album from you. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, that one's coming along pretty good. There's, um, like I said, there's about five or six songs that I have written. Um, it's just a matter when you do classical guitar, it's very, very hard to record those parts because you could say like it's a two minute song or a four minute song or whatever you could be just doing really great and then get to the end of the song and mess it up and then you gotta start all over again right it's not like you can't punch in with that that. no you can't start in the middle of a song or whatever you got to start all over and plus it's all about getting the right sound of a a, a natural sound because there's no plugging in a classical guitar you got to actually mic it and you got to get the right feel of the room and it's very hard to do um, so uh, I think that song that is on the CD, The Immortal Beloved, when it took me, uh, I think there was quite a few takes of it, you know, and I had to go, I recorded everywhere, you know, just to try and see which one would be. I mean, I recorded at my brother's house, I recorded at my other brother's house, I recorded at my house, and, um, you know, you just you just pick the best one. So Now with, um, now with this new album you got kicking here, 
Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any plans of, of uh, I mean, going out and about and bringing this out live? There's been a lot of people asking me about that, and I haven't done live shows in a very long time, and there's a reason for that, and people ask me all the time, how come we never see you play out live, or how come you're not in the band? Well, it's because I've had a lot of health issues in the last couple of years, and that's what kept me from finishing the album. So it's really kind of hard for me to get out and do live shows. Um, it's not out of the question. It's just not something I haven't really thought a whole lot about. I, I would like to, because, you know, just, and you spend so much time writing and recording this stuff, you'd like to hear it live, blasting out really loud through a huge PA, you know, with other, you know, musicians. And I, and I have a few people in mind that I would love to, you know, play with to make it come to life, you know, if that ever happens. But, you know, right now well, I'm just kind of in... If that, um, if that show does materialize, um, mm-hmm. are, are you going to sing lead vocals or are you going to have somebody else do it? Yeah, I would do it. I would be because I'm on the CD. So, I mean, I was, uh, I had entertained the idea of having different singers on all these songs. You know, um, I have a friend of mine up in up in Titusville. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, if you know him or not. Craig Cease is a great, you know, vocalist. I thought about having him sing on a couple of these songs. And and uh, Paul Bender, who sings for Fun Pipe down here, he's been a friend of mine for, you know, over 20 years. I was in a band with him back in the 80s, and he's an amazing singer. And you know, it's just, you know, schedules. You know, these guys are all in their own bands, and they play out a lot, and they're just so busy. It was just easier for me to do it all, um, you know, so I, I really don't think that they would all have time to just do that. You know, maybe one show, you know, who knows. But I just think it would be easier since I sang on it, you know. Just to go ahead have and keep it, keep it real. Have you ever sang lead vocals before? Like, at a show, have you ever sang lead vocals before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've oh, okay. I've been a couple bands where I was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where I was, the, the you know, a co-lead singer, kind of like a, you know, Kiss, like Paul, or like the Beatles, right. thing, you know. I mean, um, so you know, it's it, it's not something I like to do. I don't really. I'm more of a background kind of thing. I just like to play guitar. You know, that's my favorite thing in the world to do. I can sit and play guitar all day long and just be happy. You know, it never gets boring to me. I love to still learn stuff. I mean, I've been playing since 1979, and I still learn stuff every day. You know, and and music theory. Once you start learning that stuff, it opens up a whole new door of chords and scales and colors and sounds and just things. It's just, I never get tired of it. It's my yeah, favorite exactly. my, my yeah, yeah. favorite description. My favorite description of a song, of what a song, you know, what music is, was coined mm-hmm. by Dream Theater, Images and Words. Yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah, and I mean it's just that 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 kind of hit me. It's like your your music. I mean that that's the picture and the the words. That's the well, I would the captioning. I would like to. I think what you guys are both hinting towards is you know I, I would like to collaborate with you know I mean I collaborate with my older brother. We have a side project called Leave Awake, and there's a Facebook page and and all that stuff. You can listen to some of the songs there. Um, and, we, and we get together every couple months or whatever. I mean he he wants to write more, and I just. I'm always so busy doing my own stuff or working with somebody else or whatever, you know, it schedules. He's in a band again, so he's busy with his band. Um, right. I would like to start, you know, branching out and collaborating with other people. And, you know, I know Brian was down for, for Christmas and he came by and saw me and he got to hear this CD actually before it came out, so he already knew what it sounded like. And he uh, he's expressed interest in coming by and, and doing a couple of things. So, you know, but he's always on the road and he's always, you know, Right, working, and so you know maybe if I have some tracks ready for him, he can come by one day and do some stuff on it. We'll see. You know, I mean, I, I do enjoy working with other people. It's mostly schedules. You know, everybody's schedule. Oh, I'm, uh, exactly. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I will um, be back in Central Florida by the time I'm 43. I'm 40. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> um, Are you 42 right now? Let's, let's go ahead. <laughs> What was that? Are you 42 right now? <laughs> I'm sorry? No, no I'm sorry. 40. You were hoping to be back in Central Florida by the time you were 43. I said, are you 42 right now? I wish. I'm 40. <laughs> oh. and, and this is like the only context that I wish that I was 42 instead of 40. <laughs> but um, let's go ahead and take a break, and we're going to play You know, we're gonna play another song, and we'll be right back, which... Um, tell me which song to play there, Randy. Um, I have. Um, I think I. Go ahead. 
I have uh, one foot in the grave and ghost. Um, go ahead and play ghost. That's the the power ballad uh, that me and Laura sang off the new CD. That's the second single. The first one was shallow that you played earlier. This was the second single that came off of it, and um, this was a last minute song that barely made it on the record. It was the last song that I did, and uh, I'd never okay, done it before. This is before. Yeah, and I have it. I have it. I I got to admit, I haven't listened to any of these songs. I just not. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I'm I'm hearing them for the first time, and that's you know bad planning on my part. But I've been really busy this week. Um, so this but, song was actually but I was, written for uh, somebody else, and they didn't like it. So I said, "Well, your loss, my gain." And you know, I think that they made a bad mistake because it's a really really good song. So. <laughs> well, here we go, guys. Here it is. This, this, is, the this, this is a long, this is a long song. So this is a long song. So crank the volume up and um, kick back and go go grab yourself a beer and get ready because this this song is is awesome. And here it goes. We'll be right back on the Wind Thunder Show. <laughs>
back to the Woolen Thunder show. That was Ghost by Randy Chapman and um, what was the young lady's name that was singing it with you? Do we have Thunder? Do we have Randy? Thunder is here. Thunder is here. Thunder's here. Do we have Randy? Her name was Laura Moore. Laura <laughs> <Okay>. Moore. <laughs> We lost well, you there for a second, Randy. Was, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, I don't. I think the phone's like a delay or something because I was like talking and nothing was coming through. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> but but hold on, I gotta give I gotta give you both props. Hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, very cool. I like that. That that girl that girl's got a you know, got a beautiful voice. She and, voice she's got a really unique tone to her voice right there. I, I, I really yeah, I, I often I often tell her, I said, you know, you sound much older. You know, she reminds me of a like, you know, like a thirty year old or something. Like she's been doing it for a long time and she hasn't, you know. So. Well she she doesn't she doesn't have that um that <laughs> You know, like, ow, ow, you know, crap. That, um, the whiny, right. the whiny tone to it, which a lot of young singers have. Right, right. She's more natural, and uh, it's not. Uh, and it I think a lot of the singers you're talking about, it. it's like a lot of the people you're talking about are are probably put together by record companies. You know. Exactly. Right. You know, the whole thing. I right, well, I know this has nothing to do with rock music, but like the whole Taylor Swift thing is that whole whiny nasally. You know. Oh, are you kidding me? This is not Disney Channel. We don't need a 14-year-old singing here. No, that, that that had some substance and, and had good tone to it, and it wasn't nasally and whiny. And... Yeah, what was interesting is, like I said, she writes her own songs. And when I had that song, like I said, I, I had originally wrote the music for that a couple of years back for uh, someone else that uh, you know asked me to write some songs for uh, his CD that he was putting out. And I wrote three songs. That was one of them, and he didn't like any of them. And ironically, all three of those songs are on this CD. I just rewrote, <laughs> you know, some of the parts, and that was one of them. And I, and yeah, and I didn't have that whole song finished. And I went to her and I said, "Do you think that you could, you know, write some lyrics to this?" And all I had was the first verse and the and the chorus part where it's living with the ghost of you and all that stuff. She came up with the next verse all by herself and and her own melody lines and everything. And it was just nice to not have to, you know. Uh, coach her too much i mean she'd never really done any recording or anything like that so it was just you know i think she was here for two hours that day you know doing that vocal part so it was pretty quick for her you know yeah, and for awesome. somebody who's Especially never somebody done who's it. never done it yeah right that's awesome that's cool she I mean, does, <laughs> really does have a, a mature quality to her voice right yeah. there i mean you can tell that she's been singing for a long time and it's one of my I mean, it's one of my favorite songs that, that i've ever wrote I admit that I really like that song a lot too. The one thing, one thing that I really liked about it was um, <clears throat> the fact that I mean, you didn't use a lot of effects on her voice. I mean, we did you, that on you, purpose. We did that because we we tried it, and it just didn't sound natural. You know, it sounded really over processed and too much reverb and too much delay and too much echo and all that. And it was like, no, 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 that's not how you should sound. You should sound normal and natural. You know. So exactly. that was intentional. That was definitely and that's intentional. that's my biggest problem with um, that's my biggest problem with a lot of these people. You know, these singers, these young, especially female singers these days, they all sound like the same yeah. person because you know because of all these effects that they're processing. I mean, they they might as well just have one. Well, it's also uh, I think it's also a certain uh, recording technique that a lot of people. It's kind of almost what they call cookie cutter. Everything right. is right. Exactly done the same way with the same equipment with the same studio with the same producers the same formula you know what i mean the same songwriters so, the same song with different lyrics <laughs> yeah so you know it's, it's it's nice to hear somebody who actually you know writes their own so not that taylor swift doesn't write her own stuff but you know um it was just yeah, really yeah. refreshing to me if you turn to age 30 and you're still singing songs about high school, enough's enough and quit your whining. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just can't say no, no. Look, I live in Middle Tennessee now, so there's more country stations than there are rock stations. And unfortunately, yeah. one of my sons 
and I won't disown him because he's a country music fan, but I, I hear a lot of country music, and I swear to you, I can't. I, I will shoot myself because of Taylor Swift. Well, I, I get asked I, a lot. I get asked a lot to to write, you know, different styles, and, and country is one of them. And there's I nothing wrote, wrong with country music. I love country music. I can't yeah. stand Taylor Swift. I've wrote I, I probably two or two uh, or three country songs, and and it's definitely a lot harder than people think. You know, a while um, back when. Um, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to kind of echo what you just said about it. it's a lot harder than a lot of people think. Um, a while back, uh, I was li- I, I was living in Tennessee. You know, this is around the same time when I was recording, like when I told you about before. But um, I was subbing for um, a country music, you know, a, a local. He was out of Nashville, um, country guy, and. I tried to do um, I tried to do country music guitar and mm-hmm. I didn't do it because I yeah, mean the, just there's there's so many there's so many inc- I mean the they're playing leads throughout the entire song. I mean, it's a lot harder it's, than people think, and I, I actually started studying it a few years back. It's called chicken picking, is what you're thinking of, like Brad Paisley yeah. and Keith Urban and right. Chris Paddock, and it's very very hard because it's it's actually the technical term is hybrid picking where they pick with their fingers and a pick at the same time and um, right. it, it, it's sort of kind of like classical guitar but with classical guitar you're doing nothing but fingers Finger so picking, right. with, with hybrid picking or chicken picking like they call it in country music it's with the pick and fingers and it, it's really hard and um, you know a lot of the licks on your left hand you have to sync up with what you're doing on your right hand and you know that's one of the things I liked about classical guitar. It was a lot. It's, of it's almost like playing a piano. It's almost like piano. Yeah, see, I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah, because you got the bass lines on one hand and the melody on the other. Exactly. You have to. You have to be so ambidextrous. Yeah. Because you're thinking, all right, well, this hand's doing this, while this hand's doing this. And that's one thing about right. classical guitar. It's a thunder. A thunder. Lot, can you fix your mic? It sounds like you're inside a. It sounds like you're in a tin can. Oh uh, well, I might be. What if I? <laughs> All right, you got a problem with that? No, no, that's that a lot better now. <laughs> okay. But I'm saying, no, think about classical guitar. Uh, Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I, I didn't want, you know, I, I started helping this guy record and everything, and I was trying. I gave it up my all, but I, I was just like, you know what, I'm 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 just going to stop fooling myself. I can't do this. But mm-hmm. uh, a couple of days later, a guy calls me back, and he's like, well, my studio bass player just... Um, just you know, bailed on me. Uh, can you help me out there? I said, Yeah, that I can do. <laughs> so um, that was one of the things I liked the most about classical guitar is it's a lot more challenging, you know. And that's what I wanted to do as a musician. I wanted to challenge myself. I didn't want to just play, you know, the easiest thing or the most simplest thing. I wanted to challenge myself and be the best I could be, you know. Great. Well, that's the one thing, and as being a musician, is and to be the best. Is to know that you're never the best and keep trying to do things that's going to challenge you. I think it's you, like make it's you. almost like it's almost like golf. It's like in in the game of golf, you're actually competing against yourself. Well, music's the same way. It's like there is nobody. You know, th- this guitar player is not better than that guitar player. You're just competing with yourself. You just want to be better than you were yesterday. You know. Right. That's the best I've ever heard it put. I, I mean, honestly, that's the best I've ever heard it put. Because, you know what, there's always going to be a guy that does something different than you that one person would say, well, he's better than you are. But right. you're going to do something that the next guy says, no, he's better than he is. It's really all opinion. you know. It, it is, and, and the thing is, you know what, it's all about how you feel at the end of the day right there. If you're putting out what you think is oh, the yeah. best product that that's you can do. That's and, something and that you I get asked all the time. I get asked that all the time. It's like, you know, how do you know when you're done? When I'm happy with it. If I'm not happy that's with it. it, maybe that's why it took two years for it to come out, because I was never happy with it, you know? Right. So, right. Well, you know, uh, and that's like me. You know, I was never happy with my bass plan. I mean, I'm not, not, not unhappy though, with it, but I but always thought that I was average until one well, moment. We had a video that surfaced, you know, that I saw about five years ago. And a guy that I respected as a really, really, really good bass player in Brevard County 
was filming us doing the show. And in the background, you can hear him. This is back when we, you know, video cameras had the microphones on them, the big shoulder-carrying ones. You know what I'm talking about? And you can hear in the microphone, as we were coming up to a certain riff on a song, he's like, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, he's good, but wait till you see this. Well, unfortunately, though, the other side of that is sooner or later you have to know when enough is enough, and you have to go, it's not going to get in. This is the best it's going to be. I mean, sometimes... You know, you can sit there. I've done this with guitar solos. You know, you'll just keep doing it over and over and over, and it's like, man, the first one was good. Hey, <laughs> why did I keep doing it? Why did I keep fucking it up? Right. Yeah, yeah. You just get worse and worse. You know, so sometimes you just got to know when to say, that's good right there. You know, and a lot of times, for me personally, it takes someone else hearing it and going, that's awesome. What? Why, what? What's wrong with it? Why do you want to do anything else to it? Leave it alone. You know. So, and I don't always have that luxury of somebody, you know, to bounce it off of, you know, I don't have a producer, I don't have anybody, you know, sometimes I'll play it for friends, you know. Um, when Brian was here back in uh, December and he heard the CD before it came out, he he loved it. He said everything's great, you know, so that kind of made me feel like, okay, you know, then this sounds like, you know, it's pretty much done, you know, I just got to finish a couple of things, you know. Not that, you know, he's the be-all, end-all of, you know, the decision making for me, but it, you you play it for a few different people, and you you know you start to get a feel of what other people think about it, and you go, maybe this is done, maybe I've just been beating myself up too much over it, you know? Right, right, John. I understand that too, you know. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a, we've all done this, you know, when you're in a band or something, you'll sit there and you'll play a song and rewrite it, you know, a hundred times, and go back yeah. to the third version you came up with because that's the one that really works. Yeah, you know, that's true. Well, that's why, like, you know, yeah, you got to keep all the different takes and, you know, go back and listen to them all and, you know. And there's there's plenty of musicians out there who do way too much and you can hear it, you know. You hear oh, it, yeah. oh, well, you know what, uh, that really didn't need to be there. You know, yeah. like one of the greatest songs, you know, is played on the radio, Hotel California. Love it. The end of the song is about ten minutes too long. Because how many times do you have to play that same freaking riff? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. I just heard it on the radio. I love the song. I just love it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I love the. I love I love Hotel California too. I mean, I'm sick. Of I it. love the song, but if seriously, I, if I ever I mean, hear it again, I'll be all right. But I still love the freaking song. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know. I you never get tired of it. Don't. Uh, maybe that's just me then. Yeah, um, well, I was like, it's okay, well, thing again. You know, hey, that's a, that's a, they're like assholes. What, what now? So, but you know, it's like uh, you know, I the, the songs, you know, I draw from that stuff. Like when I listen to Hotel California, I can hear, you know, oh wow, you know, a little parts of the Eagles in my music, or I'll hear a little parts of Leonard Skinner or Judas Priest or whoever it is that you know. Like there's a song, um, that song Devil in Disguise. I got to uh, the guitar solo section of it, and I didn't know what to do. And I tried everything from, you know, ripping and shredding to playing slower like Eric Clapton or Yngwie Malmsteen or whatever, and none of it was working for me. So for some reason, as I was listening to it, I thought, well, why don't you just do something completely different? There's a couple songs like this on here, and this is one of them. And I um, I thought of my friend Chad back in high school. He was a big Judas Priest fan, and he always loved K.K. Downing. And KK was, you know, pretty famous for using his tremolo arm a lot and just making a lot of noise. Yeah. So I thought, well, why don't I just try that in this song? And it really fit. So that's what's on the record. There was another one, uh, I think I told you guys back in uh, January, December when I was on. I think it was December. And um, we were talking about guitar players back then. And I, it was uh, that song, October Rust. When I got to that solo section, I didn't know what to do there either. So I was actually studying uh, some Japanese guitar scales at the time, and I, re I told you guys this story back then. And I just applied that, you know, Japanese guitar scale to that solo section of that song, and it sounds odd and weird. But when you hear it now, had I not toned, you told you it was a Japanese guitar scale, you would have never known. You would never know. Know. right? Yeah, you'd be like, oh, that sounds really weird. But I don't know why. You know. So, <laughs> It sounds good. I don't know what it is, but it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You hear it and you go, there's something there. I'm not sure what it is, you know. And It's a little subtleties, like that ghost song. There's a lot of orchestra in that, and I did all that orchestra, and 
you know, if you take it out of there, you definitely notice that it's gone. But with it added in there, you go, wow, that just sounds really beautiful. It kind of adds to it, you know. So little things, like you said, double-tracking guitars, triple-tracking guitars, that song Forgotten Prisoner, it has, um, I think it has three guitar parts, four if you count the solos. It has an acoustic guitar, it has a clean channel guitar, and it has a crunchy electric guitar. So you layer all that stuff, and that's what you hear, and people don't know exactly. They just hear the song, and they go, hey, I like it. They don't know all the work right, right. put into it. You know? Well, this is what I love about this show right here is you, you have someone of your caliber of knowledge of music right there, and he's just explaining pretty much mm-hmm. how, how you put it together right there. I mean, you know, it is a puzzle piece right there. You know, people, you know, turn on the radio and they think that it just happens, you know, that people walk yeah. in there and they strap up and they play a song they wrote the day before and now you got a record. Right. But no, I mean, I know a lot of people yourself. like that whole. I know a lot of people like that whole live feel, where a whole band sets up in one room and they all record it one time, and you know yeah. that's all great <laughs> and stuff. But actually, a lot of Iron times, Maiden recorded Iron Maiden recorded Brave New World that way. A lot of bands do, and there's nothing wrong with that if you're trying to get that vibe or that feel. But a lot of times you're going to have to go back and and overdub, you know, a guitar solo or fix a vocal part or you know something's bleeding through another mic or whatever, you know, and you. It's just better sometimes, and, and I don't know. I like the whole process of creating, and you know, I would never take away. I don't think there's one way to record. You know, no, like not at all. Is, I think whatever works for you on this album might not be the same on the next album. You know what I mean? I, I just do love believe, how you put this um, all I do together believe yourself. That, um, I, I do believe that when you're playing a guitar solo, there's no such mm-hmm. thing as punching in. You, pl- you play the solo from start to finish, um, or you start over again basically that that <clears throat> when i record a guitar like a, even my the crappy recordings that i have and i'll play them on the ear one of these days but um mm-hmm. even the crappy recordings that i have my solos are not punched in they're played from start to finish i don't i don't punch in solos either i don't i don't believe in you know doing half a solo and then doing another half no i don't no it's always right from the beginning of the solo till the end of the solo right yeah no i don't i, I don't like that my I, I, I agree with you. I do the same thing with my uh, three-second bass fills. There's no point in doing that half and half. <laughs> well, I, 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 I will punch in parts, but I'll never punch in guitar solos. You know what I mean? No. Um, yeah. I was yeah, just trying to be it. funny there. Thanks for playing, yeah. guys. You know. Uh, uh, uh. I hold actually on. saw a thing on Facebook. Thunder, 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 this is just for you. Go ahead. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you something right now. You guys should thank us, us bass players. If it weren't for bass players, your girls wouldn't be dancing. Oh man, you saw that on Facebook. I seen that the other day. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. You saw that on Facebook. Wow. <laughs> hey, man, why does everybody bash the bass players, man? We're the coolest people in the band. Mm. I don't know. I always tell people if it wasn't for the melody writers, you guys wouldn't have anything to play to. Uh, if it wasn't for us, you guys would just be up there strumming your guitar and look like you're in a coffee shop. Now, there's not too many bass solos that interest me. Oh, Gian, come maybe. on. Come yeah, on, Billy Sheehan, uh, Cliff Burton. <laughs> don't, don't put Billy Sheehan in there. He's a guitar player. I love, I love, yeah, yeah, he really is. You know, I would love to hear him play guitar. You know, just guitar it would be. Great. I would too, because I mean, but no, no, no. Cliff Burton, Les Claypool, Lewis Johnson. Now I will. I've Come on. Said that, I've always said that if Cliff Burton was still alive, Metallica would be a lot better. <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So. Have you ever Have you ever actually listened to Lewis Johnson? Mm-mm, no. Okay, do me a favor, Randy. When you when we get off tonight, I want you to YouTube. Lewis Johnson. He is the most ridiculous, awesome bass player. When it comes to slap bass, I I, I make fun. I love I love bass players. I love drummers. I love all musicians. I think everybody important to their to their craft. You know, um, without one, you know, like I said earlier, it would just be a missing piece of the puzzle. You know, right. I think the one thing that I that I probably wish that I was better at would be keyboards. I mean, I would love to be able to play like a baby grand piano like Elton John or like Billy Joel or something like that. I wish I could play like that, but 
damn right. I mean, I can kind my of uncle, take it on the keyboard, but I can't. I can't really, you know. I I, I can't, you know. I, I I I can play Home Sweet Home by Motley Crue, <laughs> but as far as my, as my far uncle as like, is um, a piano virtuoso. I mean, yeah, I, I, mean I, I can play enough to get by and fill in spots on my songs, and and you know, but I'm just not very proficient, you know. And I wish I was, you know. My, I, my I, uncle actually I, played keyboards at Woodstock. It's something I just wish I, you know, I I could work on it more probably and get better at it, but yeah. That's the hardest. I mean, besides, in my opinion, besides the drums, because drums is such a ambidextrous, yeah. total event. You know, you're using your feet, your hands, and you're, it's just constant moving. Piano is the same way. I mean, with yeah. the, you know, the foot pedals, and you know, and especially now with a piano more than drums, you've got melody kicking in there too. So if you hit a wrong oh, yeah. note, it's different than doing a rim shot. You know, you can catch up yeah, from a rim right. shot and keep going and. You're going to have a couple of people out there who know music and be like, oh, he kind of missed there for a second. You hit a wrong yeah, note on keyboard the piano. Is, you're right. Keyboard is like, because you're playing bass lines on one hand, melody on the other, and it's like, it, it is difficult to keep up. Well, there's yeah, some, I mean, there's, there's some keyboard players out there that will, um, that will actually, you know, they're, they're a five piece band, but they only have one, you know, one guitar player. These keyboard players yeah. will actually, actually, you know, live they'll they'll play a rhythm guitar player, you know, a rhythm guitar part to where uh, to where the, you know, you're soloing and you know so so they don't sound like some of these bands that will record a rhythm Dream. guitar guitar track but um, right. have absolutely no um, you know no rhythm guitar when the when the guitar player is soloing live. Well, but one of the keyboard players. Go ahead. One of the most famous bands is uh, of, of that kind of thing is uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer. It's like they yeah. had, they were a three piece band, you know. So like when really? Greg Lake sometimes, yeah, Greg Are Lake would see- sometimes he would play wow. keyboards or he would play bass and sing or he would play guitar and sing. But they never had a guitar player and a bass player at the same time. And the Doors were sort of the same way. They didn't start using. You know, I don't think they ever had a bass player live. They didn't really use bass parts that much in the studio until, like, uh, L.A. Woman. I mean, they were on a few songs, but most of the bass lines were done on the keyboards. What about Rush? Well, Getty Lee played yeah. bass. <laughs> but, I know. Yeah, uh, Getty Lee played bass. I'm just saying, you know, I mean... Getty, I mean, Lee, like, has those like, bands, Getty Lee has, like, three invisible arms. I have no yeah. idea how he does what he does right there. Uh, you know, it's the, the weirdest thing I like about Rush when, when it comes to that stuff is they just do stuff in the studio and they'll write write it, and then it's like when it comes time to go play live, they be like, oh, now we got to figure out how to do it, you know? <laughs> and then they do it. Yeah, and then they got to, oh, wow, didn't think about this. You know, we're going on tour. I better learn how to do this. So, yeah, he's got, like, foot pedals, keyboards, bass, vocals, you know, <laughs> kitchen sink, you know. <laughs> everything right there. He's doing dishes and cooking while he's playing and right. playing and hitting the keyboard. He literally with is. I mean, with, right with foot. His, he literally yeah, is. With Giddy, Giddy Lee is. He's, 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 he's actually their new stage setup. He's got the chicken things behind him, the rotisserie chicken things going on. So. <laughs> <laughs> Set it and forget it. There you go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> God, I love it. Somebody say I'm going to give up the radio. I'm going to give up the number. Um, you know, it's not too many people in the chat room anymore. They all kind of disappeared on us. Um, but there's my other number there is like, you know, there's still a lot of people listening. Uh, the number is 646-716-6135. Call in. Um, stump us on a metal trivia question. And you'll win an autographed copy of the CD. Um, after about like another five minutes or so, I'm I'm going to ask a question. Do I win a CD if I stump you, Randy? No, no, you're not. No. You're you work for the company. You're not allowed to win. Didn't you see the fine print? Ah. <laughs> well, I, look, I wish right now off the top of my head I could pull it off because I have the voice for it. Uh, 
the terms and condition of this contest. Ah, that would be great, right? right. <laughs> you cannot be an employee or a member of the Will and Show family. Well, you know, that's actually funny that, you know, because we were talking about a, a new CD and all that stuff. That's one of the things that you notice when you first start. I mean, because this is my fourth CD. When you start putting out CDs, all the people that you know come out of the woodwork and they want you to, can you give me a CD? Can you can I have a CD? And it's right. like, people like, forget that that costs man, money. Freaking, Look, man, I'm trying to make money here, not give it away here. <laughs> yeah, and it costs money, you know. It costs a lot of money to get these things pressed up. It and, does, it you know, does. So. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on there, and I'm, I'm gonna buy a CD. Yeah, it's not that much. It's like what ten bucks or something like that. I think it's eight ninety nine. You know, so uh, you know what? Come on. Why well deserved for a uh, phenomenal musician. It's, and you know what, man? Just your knowledge that you know you're spreading out today, and you, just, you know, I, I, something about it. I mean, I, I just love everything that's going on with. And I can't believe that you put all these tracks together by yourself. I mean, to be able to be that diverse of a musician, you're not only a guitar player, a keyboard player, a bass player. That, that, they don't understand how much work goes into that. I mean, now, the studio I'm, time I'm must hurt, be... A, I'm hurt, Thunder. I'm hurt. Because I've done the exact same thing before, and you've heard it. <laughs> it's Granted, it's not as good as what he's done, but, I, but I've done it. <laughs> So what's up I mean, you haven't done it to that scale. You, you have not put 13 songs together, a whole CD mastered down. No, I have not Actually, I've done, done that. <laughs> I've done that on four CDs, but I've recorded and wrote over 300 songs. <laughs> and, Bill, I, I've given you your props 100 times, man. <laughs> hey, no, I, mean, I, I, I just got to give, give you some crap there, Thunder. You know that. Uh, you know, whatever. You give me crap all the time. Hell, I was in a band with you. I've heard a lot of your crap. <laughs> anyway. Hey, I'm surprised we hadn't heard from Brian tonight. I know. Yeah, where, I know. Where is Brian? He must He's be He's probably driving. asleep somewhere. He's probably asleep somewhere in a hotel. I think uh, he was in, in Kentucky bed. or something, last I heard. I don't know. Um, he's, he's getting... Probably so, so that's the one thing that we all have in common here. We've all had the graces to play with Brian. And I, in my opinion, he's one of the best drummers, if not the best drummer I've, I've played with. I've known Brian for a very long time. We grew up um, in the same neighborhood. We were in our first bands together. Um, I, one of our fondest memories, we always laugh about this, um, we were just talking about it recently, is uh, we were in a band, and uh, Bill... Um, I don't know if you remember uh, St. Mary's Catholic Church. Absolutely, in Rockledge, Florida. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I there. actually went through my first communion there. We were, me and Brian were in a heavy metal band, and we played there at the fair they have there every year, the St. Mary's Fair, and we were on I the know. fairgrounds. We were playing Black Sabbath songs at the fair for St. Mary's. <laughs> <laughs> it's the craziest thing. I know, we're up there playing Black Sabbath songs, so. That was uh, that's kind of ironic because me and Thunder's first show was at Divine Mercy, another yeah. big Catholic church in Merritt in Merritt Island. Coco Beach, right? <laughs> no, that was Merritt Island. That's the big the Golden Pyramid and oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. Oh God, bless America. Ages ago. Yep. <laughs> so, Randy, you, you, did, were you born in Brevard County? Yeah, I was born in Rockledge. Grew up here, uh, still live here. Um, it's home, you know, and I Woosaw. like it here. I, I like, yeah, Woosaw. I like Florida. I love Florida. I mean, I can't imagine living anywhere else. I like, you know, visiting other places. You know, my favorite place in the world is New York City, but I wouldn't want to live there. You know, I love right. living here. I like the weather here. I saw uh, Will's having a lot of, you know, problems with snow and stuff, and I don't have that problem. Yeah. It's been really beautiful down here today, you know? Yeah. That's right. So, Believe me, I, there, there's no place on earth right now that I would rather be than in Merritt Island, Florida. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it here. I mean... You know what? I ought, to, I ought to contact the Chamber of Commerce and sell them that drop for 100 bucks or something. 
That's right. I think, you know, I think the only the only beef that I have is you know like the music scene here is is not what it used to be. I mean, at one time there used to be a really big original music scene here. Oh, you know, it's awesome. not, but it's you know, getting not, not back to that from band. what we understand, though. Huh? It's getting back to that from what we understand. Originals? I don't. I don't yeah, know about it's that. Yeah, I mean, There's a few bands their, that are you know. Well, you, but it wasn't a, like back in the day. It wasn't like it was back in the day. I mean, oh, no, we, no, I mean, great. back in the day, you know, back in the day, you could go to a different club. Like on a Friday night, you could go to six different clubs and hear six different bands, all right. completely different, all playing you know? originals. And, yeah, and yeah. that was right. that was and go to Orlando or even, even in Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral area. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good clubs. bands. There, there are. You know, I will. Say that there are there are a few bands that are that are trying you know that are trying to make it happen and and sticking to their guns and that's that's great you know it's just it's not really the band's fault though it's the clubs there's just not right, any right. clubs yeah. around here you know you know back in the day you had Brassies and you had uh, the Power uh, Chickens the Power Chickens well, yeah, the Power Station well there would you be had, there would be five or you'd, there'd be five or six different places you could go. You know, and like you said, all the way from Cape Canaveral to Melbourne, and there would be different bands, different style of music, everything, and it was all original, no matter where you went. I mean, even the power station you were talking about, if you went in there and played covers, they'd laugh you off the stage. Yeah, they'd laugh you off the stage, you know? And nowadays, it's the other way around. If you go in there and play originals play around here, they're going to go, what are you doing? You know, they just, they're not very play receptive. Play some Nickelback. <laughs> You can name you can name so many bands from back in the day like the Scooby Doo, the, Skin, the Tin Can Jets, uh, I, I mean, Giant Harry, Giant Harry Nevis, um, Giant Harry band, Nevis, My Band, Bands of Love, <laughs> Screaming Bands I mean, of Love. Um, uh, what was the band that did song on the belly? Oh, um, shit. spinning infants. Or, I, there's, there's so much, so much music that was going on back then. I mean, Even my band, my band, Riff Raff, was all original. Oh, absolutely. So it was just, yeah, AWOL. AWOL, Dead Serious. Dead Serious. And Fleshy Headed Mutants. Fleshy Headed Mutants. I haven't heard that name in so long. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Tons, tons of. Tons <laughs> you could go to the Hustler, band. you could go to the station, the power station, you could go to Brasses, you could go to the pub in Cocoa Beach. I mean, at all those places. <laughs> Man, County I mean, Jenny's, County Line, it's so, still open. Yeah, uh, I mean. And then we would I'll, go I'll over to Orlando. What, I'll and, tell you what. Yeah. With, with, the the of, with the exception of, like, the, the strip, you know, with the, the the exception of, like, the strip and, you know, Los Angeles, I would I would mm. challenge anybody to, you know, to give me a better local music scene than what we had back in the day in Central Florida. Um, yeah, because... It was pretty diverse. That was the end. It was. You know, you would have everything from you know new wave to blues to metal to, I mean, I I can think of metal it, bands. Hit the beach then. and coconuts, and you'd have a Jimmy Buffett cover band. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, a couple of fifty and sixty year old guys up there playing whatever. You know. Yeah, it's very frustrating now. I mean, I'm not a fan of going out to bars and stuff, um, and I don't like. I don't really like cover bands. I understand that there's a need for them, and I know that people going out want to dance and party and have a good time and and hear their favorite songs and all that stuff. But you miss, but, you know, but just, you miss what was where people, you know, where people wanted to come out and they they wanted to hear that original song with the original hooks and everything. Well, I, mean, I can remember. Me. I can remember seeing. I can remember seeing Tabitha's Secret back in the day. Yeah, um, me too. And yeah. you know, a, a song called 3 A.M. Yeah. Which later became a, a band called Matchbox Twenty. 20. All right. I mean that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People who are listening who might Seven you know, Mary Three came out of Orlando, came from Orlando, Florida. Right. right. Exactly. There's a Seven lot of Mary Three. Where, you know, that's, that's, you know, it's an evolution evolution of music from what we're talking about to that kind of music. But yeah, you know, funny, Seven Mary Three, it. Matchbox Twenty. That was all Orlando well, music. You, and if you think about it, all the bands that bands cover now, I'll just use Tom Petty for example. If if five yeah. bands on a Friday night play a Tom Petty song, you know, Tom Petty had to start writing originals or he wouldn't be around today. 
You know what exactly. I mean? So right. it, at some at some point in your life, you got to go. I'm not going to copy anybody anymore. I'm going to be myself and do my own music. So all those songs that people hear. When I'm driving down the road and I hear American Girl by Tom Petty, I go, man, I'm glad Tom Petty wrote that song. Because if he kept just playing Beatles songs, we would have never had American Girl. You know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know what? People, so people I, don't people don't think about that. I mean, they, you know, it's, <clears throat> I've I've been at a, um, I've I've played shows when, you know, people are like play play some Skinner or play some yeah. whatever, and right. <clears throat> that. You know, I don't have a tip jar, but I mean, put a ten dollar bill in my hand or buy me a pitcher of beer. Maybe I'll think about it. I was always, well, I was always fond of playing a cover because you wanted to, not because, right? You know, the club owner, you know, the club owner said you have to play this kind of music or you can't play in my club. You know, and usually the cover that we would pick would be something obscure, off the wall, and it was just because we liked that band. You know. I can remember you know, playing. Remember the uh, remember the song uh, by Nazareth, "Hair of the Dog." I can remember playing that when nobody else would play that. You know, I can remember playing a lot of songs like that that nobody else would touch. I was in metal band back in uh, when I was doing covers back in the early '80s, and we would do Iron Maiden songs, Dio songs in a bar. You try that now, ain't gonna happen. Oh yeah. Well, so, I, I'm, I'm about to I'm about to throw um, thunder under the bus here, along with my Go along ahead, with Brian ahead. and and our guitar player of Madstone. Back in the day when that band was together, um, I came up with this idea: Why don't we cover Land of Confusion? And, yeah, whatever, you know. and everybody told me that nah, dude, let Phil Collins, no, no. <laughs> you know what cover I wanted to do, and I still who's, want who's to la- do to Who's this laughing day? now? Who's laughing now? <laughs> Disturbed. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. One of my favorite bands, but anyway, the one cover that I wanted to do, and I still would love to do, which is it is an obscure song, but it's Fake No More, Surprise You're Dead. I, don't I, know want, I would it? love to cover that. That's the song that I would love to cover. Do honestly. I've tried that's, doing that's, this forever, and you would not do it. You're right, so we're even. Land of confusion, surprise, you're dead. <laughs> anyway. And it's it, it, it a song about vampires. I don't really think too much about covers unless I'm, you know, I, I run, you know, I might, sometimes I'll be just playing my guitar and I'll stumble on something and I'll go, oh, well, that's, you know, Judas Priest or something. It's, it trips me out when that happens, too, sometimes. Like, I was sitting here one day and I'm, I was playing something, and it ended up being like a Black Sabbath song, and I'm going, wow, I don't even know that song, and here I am playing it, you know, because you just stumble on stuff sometimes, you know, when you're just jamming. So. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, we, it is, it is we're running. getting close to the end of the show right here. we got four minutes left. All right. Randy, uh, this is, no, it's been fun, man. It's been fun. All I'm saying here is you got four minutes right now, live air time. Tell them where to get your CD, man. People, uh, I'm telling you right now. Go ahead, go ahead. Tell them where to get it. Well, again, any of my CDs, i got four of them out now. Till Death Do Us Part was the first one. Uh, no One Gets Out Alive was the second one. One Foot in the Grave was the last one, and this one is Cursed. They're all on iTunes. They're on Amazon. They're on CD Baby, uh, CD Universe. You can contact me. I will sell them directly to you. Um, a lot of people ask me to autograph them. I mean, it's kind of weird when I, have to, when I do that, you know, but if that's what they want. You know, I'll autograph them and whatever, you know. Um, it, it comes along with being a guitar god and music virtuoso. Well, I mean, I appreciate that. <laughs> Guys, do yourself a favor. Get in touch with him. Get get on a, the computer. Buy the CD. I'm telling you now, the bits and pieces I have heard are amazing. You need You, you need to own the CD right here. Uh, yeah, you can, and, and, and understand that what you're listening to is this is like a one man band right here. He has put every track on every C or every song on his CD, except for the female vocals, and right. it, it, that's totally amazing. And it's bass player to bass player. 
Well, I was recently contacted. I, I get contacted by uh, different people from different countries. And in Germany, I was doing like a thing for a, a magazine over there, and they were asking me, you know, they were saying something about how, oh, this CD is so good, and it's like metal and all that, and it should be like with in with everybody. If you like this kind of music, you got to have this in your collection. So it's kind of neat to hear somebody say that my CD should be right next to, like, Accept or Judas Priest or something, you know. It's kinda- it, it, it does. It deserves to be up there. And I'm telling you, and, and, and I'm telling everybody out there who's listening, the diversity on this album is amazing. You're not going to hear the same thing twice on this album, but you're going to hear metal. You're going to hear real, real metal music, and it's, it's, it's the whole thing's awesome. Well, I will say, I was going to play all the parts, so it's not like it was all just blew in there. It was like, yeah, I have to literally sit down and plug in and play everything. So. Yeah, we're, it's amazing. We're gonna, go, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. We got we got less than a minute, and we're gonna wrap it up with the song um, "One Foot in the Grave" off of um, off of Randy Chapman's album "Curse." Um, you know where to get it. Uh, "One Foot in the Grave" was the last CD. That was the album "One Foot in the Grave." Oh well, this is the song that I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's off of the album "One Foot in the Grave." Okay. All right, well, listen, guys, thanks for uh, listening. And, uh, Randy, thank you so much for being on the show tonight, man. And uh, thanks, guys. Nothing the best to you, man. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. All right, and uh, Randy, I'll be calling in, man. All right. I'll be, I'll be calling you in just a few minutes, Randy. Uh, we're okay, going to take it out with one foot in the grave. Good night okay. from the Will and Thunder Show.
right, everybody. Next week, <clears throat> next we got Romeo Rodriguez and his book uh, about band names. Band names that I never thought that I would ever write. Craziest band names you've ever heard. Check it out. Will and Thunder Show. Good night.